AP Calculus BC Unit 7 Day 2, Office Hours. These are the answers to the worksheet. You can pause the video real quick <clears throat> to check them. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to to check these answers. Here's the answers at the bottom. And the answers on the back. And the last problem. Okay. <clears throat> So we have some absolute values and distance and displacement. So absolute values, we can do potentially three different ways. Um, <clears throat> these linear absolute values you can do <clears throat> with geometry. So you could just draw a picture. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So the geometry, you, you draw a picture. So uh, graph line up one over one, 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 up one over one. So that's the line. The absolute value flips it, flips the negative part up. So. <clears throat> That is your graph, and you're integrating from one to seven. So you have two little triangles. And so you could uh, <clears throat> say, okay, well, one, one half, the base of the first one's three, the height is three, plus one half, the base of the next one is four, and the height is also four. Based off the slope of one, it's going up one over one. So if you go over four, to have to go up four. And so then we get nine halves, plus 16 halves is 25 halves. So that's one way you could do it. Or did I make a mistake somewhere? Oh, I did make a mistake because we're only supposed to go from one to seven. So the first one should have a base two and a height of two. So that gives you uh, two plus eight is 10. <clears throat> <clears throat> Be careful. Pay attention to the limits, I guess. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, the other way is to use like a table. So you would find the zeros <clears throat> by saying equal zero, and then um, you could set up a table, break it up at the zeros. Kind of like what we did in the graph, we broke it up at the x-intercept. <clears throat> We're going to integrate the function without absolute values. And just plug these in, you get 1 half minus 3 is negative 2 and a half. And you get uh, 9 halves minus 9 equals uh, negative 9 halves. You make this negative 5 halves. You plug 7 in, you get 49 halves minus 21. So it'd be 49 minus 42 would be 7 halves. And then you find the distance between these, <clears throat> absolute value of the difference. So the distance between negative 5 halves and negative 9 halves is 4 halves, which is 2. The distance between negative 9 halves and 7 halves is 16 halves, which is 8. And you add these together and you get 10. Same answer. <clears throat> Geometry was kind of easy. Geometry can only be used on these linear ones. So this this now this table thing is really kind of a shortcut condensed version of the work you would typically do because usually what you would do is you do a line check with your zero, figure out where the 
function is positive or negative. So the three is where you're going to break it up for sure. The places where it's negative, you got to make sure you force it to be positive if you're integrating. And usually you don't have a picture of it, so you could use a line check. So you like test four, positive, negative. So then, <clears throat> so this is one way of doing it, right? Uh, that involved that. And then there's this other way that we just did. Um, and then the line check uses that also right there. And what you do is re rewrite the function. <clears throat> you say, okay, well, let's drop the absolute values x minus three, dx. So let's, we're going to do one to three, and then we're going to do three to seven. And if it's a negative, if it's below the x-axis, it's negative. Then we have to fix it by putting an extra negative in front to force negative to become positive. So this is kind of the most straightforward, typical way of doing it. And this is the same work, except that when you do it this way, you do some of the work multiple times, which just makes it, and the table's kind of nicely organized. So the antiderivative here would be x squared over 2 minus 3x. So one of the things that you do repetitively is you do this antiderivative twice. So in the table, we did it once. So that's one benefit of the table. <clears throat> then we plug in 3 and we get 9 halves minus 9, and then we plug in 1, and we get 1 half minus 3. And then we plug in 7, and we get 49 halves minus 21. And then we plug 3 in again, so we get 9 halves minus 9. So we end up plugging the 3 in twice, whereas in the table you just do it once. Then you just got to do all this math, whereas the table was kind of nice. It was kind of easy just to figure it out in our head here. We got to be a little more careful with all this stuff. So um, <clears throat> this is going to be negative uh, 9 halves. This is going to be negative uh, 5 halves. And this is going to be 7 halves minus negative 9 halves. Each of these should, so that's going to be plus plus, that's going to be negative four halves, but then the extra negative fixes it and makes it two. And then that's going to be plus plus, and that's going to be eight, and you get ten that way. So three different ways. They just did this problem three different ways you choose. Most people probably would go lean towards the table. Now, number two, we can't do geometry because it's not linear. It's like a weird parabola curve, so we're not going to be able to use formulas from geometry to find the area of that shape. So um, you want to factor it and set it equal to zero to find the zeros. So you have to do this with the table or without the table. Um, and then we could, we could jump into the table. Uh, break it up at zero, two, six. You get the endpoints and you break it up. And we're going to plug it into the integral of, of without the absolute values. So we get x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared over 2. And we plug 0 in, we get 0. You plug 2 in, you get 8 thirds minus 4, which would be negative 12 thirds. So it would be negative 4 thirds. And then 6 is going to be 36. It's going to be 72 minus 36 is going to be 36. And you can find the distance between these. The distance between these is 4 thirds. Distance between these is 37 and 1 third. So if you add these together, you get, uh, <clears throat> that's 1 and 1 third. You get uh, 38 and 2 thirds, or uh, 90, 21, 14, 1 16 over 3. So that's using the table. Otherwise, we would find the zeros, but then we would do a line check to figure out where it's positive or negative. So we would test a point, show the word test x equals 3. Um, it's going to be positive, negative, positive. So when we rewrite it, we're going to break it. We're going to do uh, 0 to 2 of x squared minus 2x dx without absolute values. That's the whole point of this. And then we're going to do 2 to 6 of x squared minus 2x dx. And the negative part has to be fixed. So this is the part that's going to turn out negative. So we need an extra negative to fix it. And then you would continue to do the work. 
x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared over 2 x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared over 2. So there's a little bit of repetitive work. 2 to 6, you're going to plug 2 in twice, whereas in the table you just did once. <clears throat> So um, if you plug 2 in, you get 8 thirds minus 4. Plug 0 in, you get 0 minus 0. And plug 6 in, you get 72 minus 36. Minus plug 2 in, it's going to be 8 thirds minus 4. So just got to simplify. This is going to be negative, negative 4 thirds. And this is going to be... Uh, 36 uh, minus negative 4 thirds plus 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 plus. So um, give this least common denominator, it's going to be 108, 112, 116 over 3, or 38 and 2 thirds. So you have options of how you can do these problems. The table cuts down the work a little bit, you know, and kind of organizes nicely. It cuts down some of the repetitive work. You're doing the same work. <clears throat> okay, next one. Uh, we want to find the zero, so we're going to set this equal to zero and then solve. So alpha equals one to sine equal one half. <clears throat> First angle, small angle, pi over 6, quadrants 1 and 2. So we get 2x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> sorry, 2x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And x equals pi over 12 plus pi k. And x equals 5 pi over 12 plus pi k. And we just want the ones between 0 and pi over 2. So that's just going to be these two right here. So <clears throat> that's where you're going to break it up. <clears throat> if you do the table, we can do 0 pi over 12. 5 pi over 12, and pi over 2. And this is where our line check is probably going to help out, because when we plug these in, we're going to integrate 2 sine 2x two minus 1 dx, and we're going to get negative cosine 2x minus x. So we plug 0 in here. Uh, we get cosine 0 is 1, so we get negative 1. Plug pi over 12 in, we get cosine of pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2. That's pi over 12. Plug in uh, 5 pi over 12, we get cosine of 10 pi over 12, which is going to also be root 3 over 2. Um, 10 pi over 12 would be 5 pi over 6, but it's the second quadrant, so it's negative root 3 over 2. So it becomes a positive. And then uh, pi over 2, cosine of pi is negative 1, so you get positive 1 minus pi over 2. Now here's the thing. It's hard to figure out what the, di the differences of these would be to make sure it comes out positive. When they're just numbers, it's easy to kind of just do it in your head. So this is where a line check, I think, would still be helpful, even if you're doing the, the table approach. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick little line check. I'm going to test 0, um, plug it in here, sine of 0 is 0, it's going to be negative, positive, negative. So this is the negative chunk that has to be fixed, and here's another negative chunk that has to be fixed. So one way to fix it is to plug the limits in backwards. Instead of doing top minus bottom, you do bottom minus top. You do the, the integral backwards, and it'll give you a negative answer. So instead of doing this minus this, we're going to do this minus this. So it's going to be negative 1 plus root 3 over 2 plus pi over 12, and I can feel confident that that is the positive answer. That would be a lot easier in trying to estimate these and all that stuff. <clears throat> now, the next chunk is a positive chunk. So we're going to do the later limit minus the earlier one, top minus bottom like normal. So it's going to be root 3 over 2 
minus negative root three over two, which is going to give you root three. <clears throat> And then uh, negative 5 pi over 12 minus negative pi over 12, so that's going to be minus 4 pi over 12. The next one's a negative chunk, so we need to go backwards again. So we need to do this one minus this one. So it's going to be root 3 over 2 um, minus uh, 4 pi over 12, or so least common denominator, um, plus pi over 12 and then negative one. <clears throat> so now we're gonna add all these up and we get uh, negative two, negative one, negative one, root three over two, root three over two is root three. And we already have root three, so that's plus two root three. Uh, negative four pi over 12 plus two pi over 12 gives you negative two pi over 12, negative pi over six. <clears throat> so, that's the answer with the table. I mean, this problem is just kind of hard anyways. Otherwise, the alternative is to break up and do the integrals kind of like normal. So you would say, okay, we're going to do 0 to pi over 12 of 2 sine 2x minus 1 dx plus pi over 12 to 5 pi over 12 2 sine 2x minus 1 dx, and then 5 pi over 12 to pi over 2, 2 sine 2x minus 1 dx. The negative parts have to be fixed, so we need actual negative in front of this part and actual negative in front of this part. And then you would just, you would have to keep going. Now, um, if you guys are okay with it, I mean, you're going to get the same values that we got here, but it's going to, you're doing several of them multiple times. Um, the antiderivative is the same as what we got in the, t the table right here. Um, but <clears throat> it's a lot of the same work we just did and tedious. So I'm not going to do all that work again, but, uh, you know, this is, this is the next step. And then you would keep going. <clears throat> I don't have enough room here to do it. So it's up to you. Next one, similar thing. Set it equal zero, find the zeros. Alpha equals pi over six, quadrants three and four, it's negative. Three x equals, <clears throat> quadrant three be uh, seven pi over six, plus two pi k. Three x equals, quadrant four be 11 pi over six, plus two pi k x is going to equal 7 pi over 18 plus 2 pi over 3k. x is going to equal 11 pi over 18 plus 2 pi over 3k. So it's going to be 7 pi over 18, <clears throat> 11 pi over 18. If you know you could check it out, we just want the ones between zero and, and pi over two. So if you were to add another 12 pi to this, that'd be 19 pi over 18, which is, um, in fact, uh, I think this one's actually already passed it, right? This is the only one. So our table now we're gonna probably want a line check for this so we can figure out which way to subtract. I find that to be the best strategy. Um, so uh, it's really just one seven pi over 18 test x equals zero. Um, that's going to be positive negative. So we're going to do zero seven pi over 18 and pi over two. <clears throat> And we're going to integrate 2 sine 3x plus 1. That's going to give you 
negative 2 cosine 3x is going to give me an extra 3 that we don't want. So we get divided by 3 plus x. So it's antiderivative. We plug 0 in here. Cosine 0 is 0. So we're going to get negative 2 thirds. And then um, plug 7 pi over 18 in here, which is going to be the same thing as 7 pi over 6, which is going to be um, quadrant 3. So it's negative. Negative 2 times negative root 3 over 2. Negative 2 thirds times negative root 3 over 2 plus 7 pi over 16, 18. Then pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So we just get pi over 2. Now, <clears throat> the first part is the positive part. So we're going to just do our, our normal thing here. Um, root 3 over 3 plus 7 pi over 18. Subtract this. It's plus 2 thirds. This one's the negative portion of the graph. So if we want to go backwards, we want to do this one minus this one. So it's going to be another root 3 over 3 plus 7 pi over 18 minus pi over 2. So <clears throat> um, to combine these, we can give these least common denominators. And we're going to add these up. So we're going to get uh, 2 root 3 over 3 plus 2 thirds. And then we have 14 pi minus 9 is going to be plus 5 pi over 18. So that should be the exact answer. Alternatively, you would rewrite this as 0 to 7 pi over 18. 2 sine x, 2 sine 3x, plus 1 dx, and then you would do uh, 7 pi over 18 to the pi over 2 of 2 sine 3x plus 1 dx, and this is the negative part, so you're going to put a negative in front. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, then you would integrate these, negative 2 cosine 3x over 3 plus x, 0 to 7 pi over 18, minus negative 2 cosine 3x over 3 plus x, 7 pi over 18 to pi over 2. And then you would plug those in, and you get the same kind of answers here, and you eventually get the same answer in the end. <clears throat> okay, next one. Next one, we could do geometry. It's linear, which seems like a nice option. But, you know, well, it's up to you. I don't, the table might still be <clears throat> better. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So um, it starts at negative four. I'm just going to graph the line first. Up. 2 over 1, up 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 2 over 1. And then this gets flipped up. <clears throat> and we're going from 0 to 6. And so we could do 1 half base times height plus 1 half. The base of this one is 4. The height, I wouldn't rely on my picture so much. The slope is 2. So if you go over 4, that means you went up 8. And so we get 4 plus 16 is 20. <clears throat> and that's the answer. So we do like that. Uh, we could find the zero. Um, factor it equals zero, x equals two. So that's the x-intercept of the graph. If we don't graph it, then we just know that's where it's at. So then um, we could do a table and go zero, two, six, integral of two x minus four. 
it's going to give you 2x squared over 2 minus 4x. And plug 0 in here, you get 0. Plug 2 in, you get 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Plug 6 in, you get 36 minus 24 is 12. You find the distance between them. You add them up. And you get the same answer. <clears throat> table thing's pretty slick. I might pick the table even over geometry. Alternatively, you would do a line check and find positive negative and rewrite this as the integral of 2x minus 4 from 0 to 2 and 2 to 6 without absolute values. That's the whole point of this. Fix this, make it negative because it was negative. Find the antiderivative, 2x squared over 2 minus 4x. 2x squared over 2 minus 4x. Plug the values in, plug limits in. Um, so this would be 4 minus 8 minus 0 minus 0. This would be 36 minus 24 <clears throat> minus 4 minus 8. So you would get positive 4 here, plus 12, plus 4, gives you 20. Same answer. I just did that problem three ways. Okay, um, next one. Factor it. We're going to have to, yeah, we're not going to be able to do this with geometry. We've got to factor it no matter what. So it's going to be minus 2, minus 4. On the x-intercepts because that's where we're going to break it up um table we could probably avoid the line check plug zero in get zero plug two in get eight thirds minus 12 plus 16, so it's 4, which is 12 thirds, is 20 thirds. Did that right. Oh, I should have broken up it at 4. I don't even know what I'm doing. 2 to 6. Okay, so this one is 8 thirds minus 12 plus 16 is 20 thirds. Plug four in. <clears throat> Plug four in, you get a uh, sixty-four thirds minus three times sixteen is forty-eight plus thirty-two, so it's negative sixteen, negative forty-eight, positive sixteen thirds. Plug uh, six in. Plug 6 in, um, you get 72 minus 3 times 36 is 108, <clears throat> plus 8 times 6 is 48. So that's going to be negative 36, that's going to be 12 or 36 thirds. So the distance between these is... 4 thirds, the distance between these is 20 thirds, so the total distance is 24 thirds, or 8. So the answer is 8. Or you do a line check, 2, 4, test x equals 5, positive, negative, positive, rewrite the integral, x squared minus 6x plus 8 from 2 to 4, and from 4 to 6, x squared minus 6x plus 8. Uh, we've got to fix the negative part with an extra negative. And now you can happily evaluate the definite integral. x cubed over 3 minus 6x squared over 2 plus 8x plus x cubed over 3 minus 6x squared over 2 plus 8x, and keep going. All right.
Okay, uh, distance and displacement. So we have acceleration here, and we have initial value for velocity. Um, and on this problem, we're just being asked to find velocity. So we know that velocity is the integral of the derivative of velocity, which is the integral of acceleration, which is the integral of sine 2t dt. So it's going to be negative 1 half cosine 2t, a little chain rule stuff going there, plus c. We could find the plus c by using the initial value, cosine of 0 plus c equals 1 half. That's going to be a 1, so c is going to equal 1, and your final velocity is going to be negative 1 half cosine 2t plus 1. <clears throat> Uh, problem number eight says uh, they give you the acceleration and initial condition, velocity, and position, and they want to know the intervals where John is slowing down and the maximum velocity from zero to four. So slowing down is when the acceleration and the, and the velocity have opposite signs. So you, you, want to, you want to do two line checks for acceleration velocity. So when we do one for acceleration, we've got to find the equation for velocity first. So um, we know that velocity is the integral of the derivative of velocity, which is the integral of acceleration. I just like writing this stuff down to just, you know, make sure I'm doing the right thing. Acceleration is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9 which is going to be 3t cubed over 3 minus 12t squared over 2 plus 9t plus c. And we can use the initial condition velocity 0, plug it in here. So it's going to be 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 squared plus 9 times 0 plus c equals 0, which means c equals 0, and your velocity equation is e cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t. <clears throat> so that's our velocity equation. Uh, we need to do a line check with it and line check with acceleration. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with line check with this. Uh, you want to factor it and set it equal to 0. So t equals 0 and t equals 3, which is going to bounce off the graph. So <clears throat> 0, 3, test a point, t equals 4, positive, positive, negative. Acceleration, I'm, I really would like to do these line checks above and below each other, but let me try and figure out what the... Um, zeros are first for acceleration. So we take a three out, GCF, makes it work easier. Okay, so this is zeros, and then I'm gonna do the line check below it and kind of try and line these up. So put the one here and the three here, relatively line them up. Test t equals four, positive, negative, positive. We also don't want to include negative time uh, for our final answer. So it's slowing down when they have opposite signs, which is going to be here and here, but we're not going to include that in our final answer, right? So, I mean, you could say negative infinity to zero and um, and one to three, but we're just gonna go with one to three. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's any units on this problem. So that's how you do speed up slowing down. Now, uh, maximum velocity, that's extreme value theorem. I think I'm gonna try and fit it over here. So part B, we're trying to do max velocity. So we wanna find the derivative of the thing we're trying to maximize. We have the endpoints. We need to find critical points. So the critical points are always the derivative of the thing that you're trying to maximize or minimize. 
So that would be acceleration, which would be 3t squared minus 12t plus 9, set equal to 0, undefined. Now we already found those values right over here. That's 1 and 3. So those are your critical points. And so then you do a table, and you would plug them into velocity, the thing you're trying to maximize. So you plug in, um, the endpoints are 0, critical points are 1 and 3. So you plug 0 in, you get 0. Plug 1 in, you get negative 5. Uh, 4, plug 3 in, you get 27 minus 54. 4 plus 27, which is 0. And then you plug 4 in, <clears throat> and you get um, 64 minus 6 times 16 is 96, plus 36. So that's going to be negative 32, so that's positive 4. So this is your max, shows up twice, and this is your min. Which is a twice. You only have one max, one min, but it can happen in multiple places. So we'd say uh, Johnny's uh, maximum velocity is for at time t equals one and four. And if you were going to justify it, you'd say by extreme value theorem, check it in points, critical points. So there you go. I've got a few more of these problems. Back. Um, so we have acceleration, initial velocity, initial position. Uh, when is Johnny moving backwards? When is Johnny speeding up? What is Johnny's average velocity? So um, I think we need to, moving backwards would be negative velocity. Speeding up would be acceleration and velocity have the same sign, right? And average velocity would just be mean value theorem for derivatives. It'd be the easiest way to do that. So I think we got to find the velocity. So the velocity is going to be the integral of 12t squared minus 24t, which is going to be 12t cubed over 3 minus 24t squared over 2 plus c. We have initial condition, plug 0 in. <clears throat> zero so c equals zero so our velocity equation is 4t cubed minus 12t squared um i don't think we need the position equation so i'm not gonna calculate it yeah i guess we might yeah why not we'll just find it right now s equals the integral of velocity which we just found So that's going to be 4t to the 4th over 4 minus 12t cubed over 3 plus c. And we have initial condition at time 1. So should equal 1. So c is going to equal, uh, that's 1 minus 1, negative 3. c equals 4. So the position equation is t to the 4th. That's 4t cubed plus 4. Okay, so when is Johnny moving backwards? So that would be when the velocity is negative. So let's do a line check with velocity. Let's factor it. 4t squared, t minus 3 equals 0, t equals 0, t equals 3. We could use this for the speeding up, slowing down also. <clears throat> so the line check, 0. 3, test a point, t equals 4, positive, negative, negative. And we generally don't <coughs> include answers for negative time, so it's just going to be uh, 0 to 3. And we'll say include the endpoints, like increasing, decreasing, include the endpoints. 
And then for speed of slowing down, we got to find the accelerations zeros. So acceleration, factor out the 12t, t minus 2 equals 0, t equals 0, and 2. Line check, I'm going to put it down here below it just to make it easier to see. So 0 and 2 test t equals 3, positive, negative, positive. So speeding up is when they have the same signs. <clears throat> so that's going to be, I'm going to squeeze all this in here. That's going to be uh, 0 to 2 and 3 to positive infinity. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, average velocity, v average, is the same thing as s prime average. So mean value theorem, I'm going to do s of 2 minus s of 0 over 2 minus 0. And so s of 2, if you plug 2 in here, <clears throat> it's 16 minus 32 is negative 32. Oh, sorry, 16 minus negative 32 is negative 16. That's going to be negative 12. And zero is four, and um, so we get negative eight is the average velocity. Or did I make a mistake? Uh, oh, no, that's right. I think my work on my problem was I didn't use the right endpoint. So I think that should be the right answer. I think I got the wrong answer. On my uh, solutions. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, number 10, let's see. <clears throat> you have acceleration, initial velocity, initial position, Johnny's displacement and distance. So displacement and distance uh, involve the interval of velocity. So we definitely want the velocity equation. And I think we could probably avoid the position equation. So velocity is going to be the integral of 6t minus 12. is going to be 6t squared over 2 minus 12t plus c. <clears throat> and then um, use the initial condition. And so then c equals 0. So our velocity equation is 3t squared minus 12t. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, displacement is going to be the integral of velocity from 1 to 5. Uh, distance traveled is going to be the integral of the absolute value of velocity. Now, if we do the table, we could use it for both of these problems. So I'm going to do the table. Big fan of the table. So <clears throat> Let's find zeros here, factor out the 3t. Okay, and we'll do a table. So we're gonna do uh, 0, 1, 4, 5. We don't need to do the zeros outside the endpoints. We're gonna integrate um, 3t squared minus 12t. So that's going to be 3t cubed over 3 minus 12t squared over 2. Um, and we don't need plus c because it's a definite integral. So if we plug 1 in, uh, we get uh, 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Plug 4 in, you get 64 minus 96, uh, 16. Uh, that's going to be negative. 32, you plug 5 in, you get 125 minus uh, 150 is negative 25. Now, displacement is just going to be the final position minus initial position. And these aren't technically the final initial positions because they don't have the plus C involved, but the plus C would cancel out in my calculation anyways. So uh, displacement is going to be negative 25 minus negative 5 is going to be, uh, let's just make sure I did that right, <clears throat> 1 minus 6. So I'm getting negative 20. 
and then distance would be the distance between these, which is 27, distance between these, which is 7, and the distance would be, okay, did I make a mistake in the calculation? I think I may have made a mistake. Um, 2 cubed minus 6 t squared, 4, 64, minus 96, um, Oh, I think I just I messed, messed up on my work or something. So I think this is the displacement, and the distance is going to be 34. Um, so I think I may have made a mistake on my work, my solutions, which I'm going to probably just leave the way they are. Um, Just double checking the work here. Okay, so I'm confident that, the, that should be the right answer. So, okay, 11, displacement and distance. So same kind of problem. So let's even crank this out. <clears throat> I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna talk. I'm just gonna do the work if that's cool with you. Got to find the zeros. Okay, and then uh, we're going to do a table. Okay, so that critical point falls outside of the endpoint, so I'm not gonna calculate it. If you put zero in, you get zero. You plug two in, you get uh, eight thirds minus 12 plus 16. So that'd be four, that'd be uh, 12 thirds, that'd be 20 thirds. Plug three in, you get uh, nine minus 27 plus 24. So that's uh, 33, that's 6, or 18 thirds. So um, the displacement is going to be 6 minus 0 is 6. And the distance is going to be the integral of the absolute value of velocity, which is the integral of velocity. So we just find the distance is going to be 20 thirds, 18 thirds. So the distance is going to be uh, 38 thirds or thir uh, 12 and let's see. Okay, I found, found a mistake here. The distance between these is two thirds, so this should be 22 thirds or seven and one third. Okay. Uh, next one, same kind of problem. Let's see if we can crank through this. Velocity is 6t squared minus 18t plus 12. Find the zeros. Factor a 6 out first. And then we could factor it more. So t equals 1 and 2. Uh, do a table. Integrate the velocity, so squared minus 18t is 12. You can't just get rid of that 6 GCF. 
and that was just part of the factoring, but it's still part of the velocity. So it's going to be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. So 6t cubed over 3 minus 18t squared over 2 plus 12t. You don't need the plus c on this because it's a definite integral. Plug 0 in, you get 0. Plug 1 in, you get negative 7. You get 5. Plug 2 in, you get 16 minus 36 plus 24. Same 20, that's 4. Plug 3 in. You get 54 minus 81 plus 36, uh, so that's what, 80, 90, that's 9. So the displacement is the final position minus the initial position. <clears throat> so displacement is 9, and distance would be 5, 1, Five distance is going to be 11. Now, um, my displacement is different than what I have in my solution, so I think I made a mistake in my solutions because I feel pretty good about this one. I can double check my work. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, last one particle initially at rest. So that's your initial velocity is zero at rest. And there's long x axis, acceleration. This is the acceleration, position at time one, so S1 equals three, or X1, when the values of T when particles at rest, that would be velocity equals zero, right expression position, so we're trying to find ST, and find the total distance. Okay, um, so we need to find the velocity equation for sure. Um, so we can integrate the acceleration Use the initial condition, time zero. So the velocity equation is 4t cubed minus 4t. So it's going to be a rest when this equals zero. Um, so we're going to factor it. GCF 4t, t squared minus 1. So we get t equals 0 and t equals negative 1 and t equals positive 1. Now we only want the positive time, so it's uh, at rest at t equals 0 and 1. 0 and 1. I okay. get expression for position, so we would need to keep going and integrate velocity. And use the initial position, so I guess we should call it x. x at 1 equals uh, 3. So this would be negative 1, so c equals 4. So x is, x is uh, t to the 4th minus 2t squared plus 4. And then total distance, we'd want to do a table with uh, information that we already have. You know, integrate velocity, which is going to be position. So we could just use that. Um, we did find plus C, which we wouldn't need to use here, but that's fine. You could use it. It should come out the same. And so we're going to do negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to get rid of the one outside of the endpoints, 0 to 2. Plug 0 in, you get 4. Plug 1 in, you get uh, 3. Plug 2 in, you get uh, 32 or 16 minus 8 plus 4 is going to be 12. So the distance is going to be 1 and 15, or sorry, 1 and 9. So the distance equals 10. All right, there you go. That's it.